got a big video for you guys. Today, we're going to be hopping into my full 2022 season predictions. We're going to be going over every team's record, award winners, World Series winner, all that good stuff. So this is going to be a good one. And I had to throw on the Rockies jersey because this is going to be a big video. This is personally one of my favorite videos to make. And for the jersey itself, it is a Kyle Freeland jersey. I have Arenado and Story jerseys, but obviously they're no longer with Colorado. But anyways, like I said, this is going to be a pretty long video. I don't want to make it too long, so let's hop right into the standings. Starting off with the AL East, going from bottom to top in fifth place, I have the Baltimore Orioles going 59-103. and 103. The Orioles team has some promise. They have Adley Rushman, Grayson Rodriguez, both likely to make their debuts this year. So they're going to be a good team in the future, but I do not think they're quite there yet. But I do think Baltimore is going to be a lot better than last year. I just don't necessarily think their record will reflect it because they are playing in a division with four very good teams. Now, for fourth place in the American League East, I have the Yankees going 83-79. and The Yankees are a really good baseball team. In most other divisions, they would probably be fighting for the top spot, but in this division, I just don't think they're as good as the three teams I have above them. I'm just not too confident in the Yankees' starting rotation outside of Garrett Cole, and Araldis Chapman is getting up there in age, so I'm not too sure how productive he will be in the ninth inning. So the Yankees are a good team overall, I just don't think they're good enough to compete in the AL East. Moving on, coming in at third place in the American League East, I have the Boston Red Sox going 86-76. and 76. The Red Sox starting rotation is a bit questionable outside of Chris Sale, who will start the year out on the injured list, but I like the moves they made offensively to pick up Trevor Story to beef up their offense. So you could say the Red Sox are pretty similar to the Yankees, but I just think they're a little bit better overall. Now for second place in the American League East, I have the Tampa Bay Rays going 91-71. and The Rays are going to be without their ace in Tyler Glass now, who is going to be out all season long, but I do think they are going to carry the load offensively, and I think they will be just fine. I like Shane McClanahan, I like Shane Boz, I think both of them will complement Tyler Glass now's absence. I think they're both very good young pitchers who are going to have good seasons. On top of that, they're pretty solid offensively. They have Randy Rosarena, Austin Meadows, Brandon Lau, and of course Wander Franco, who in my opinion is one of the front runners for American League MVP. On top of that, Tampa has easily the best coaching staff in all of baseball. They seem to turn bad teams into great teams, so I'm never going to doubt them. And that leaves us with the Toronto Blue Jays, who I have coming in first place in the American League East this year, going 96-66. and Toronto has stars all around offensively. They're going to be one of the best offensive teams in baseball. And their starting rotation isn't all that bad either. They have Kevin Gosman, Alec Manoa, Jose Barrios, and they also have Jordan Romano to close out games, who is one of the more underrated closers in baseball. Toronto is all around star-studded. I think they're going to be one of the best teams in baseball this year. Moving on to the AL Central, in fifth place, I have the Kansas City Royals going 73-89. and the Royals really aren't that bad of an offensive team. They have Salvador Perez, Andrew Benintendi, and the top prospect in baseball, and Bobby Witt Jr. But their pitching rotation is where their downfall really begins. They have Zach Ranke, who is currently their ace, and he's really just not the pitcher he once was. So I wanted to give the Royals 80 wins, but I just couldn't with how bad their pitching rotation is. Their offense is going to win them a lot of games, but their pitching isn't going to get them too far. Moving on, in fourth place, I have the Detroit Tigers going 78-84. and the Tigers are a team that a lot of people are picking to be very improved this year, but I'm not too big of a fan of their roster. They did add Eduardo Rodriguez and Javier Baez, and on top of that, they're going to have Spencer Torkelson make his debut, but I just don't think those three guys are going to push Detroit over the top. So by no means am I saying Detroit is a bad team, I just don't think they're going to compete like a lot of people are predicting. In third place, I have the Cleveland Guardians going 82-80. and Cleveland has a really good pitching staff, but outside of Jose Ramirez and Franmil Reyes, they don't have very many options offensively. But I do pick them to be over 500 because I think that pitching staff is going to win them a lot of games. I mean, Jose Ramirez and Shane Bieber are legitimate MVP and Cy Young candidates, so they're going to be a pretty decent team when they have those two. Now for second place in the AL Central, I have the Minnesota Twins going 83-79. The Twins are sort of a confusing team because they made a lot of offseason moves when they were really not expected to compete. I do like the offensive trio they have in Byron Buxton, Carlos Correa, and Jorge Polanco. Now for their pitching staff, they picked up Sonny Gray, but outside of him they don't have too much options, so I don't think their pitching is going to be great, but I think their offense is going to be good enough to carry them to 83 wins. 
and in first place I have the White Sox going 93-69. and 69. The White Sox are clearly the best team all around in this division, and I don't really got too much to say about them. They have a star-studded offense to go along with a very good pitching staff, so I think top to bottom they're the easy pick to win the AL Central. Now moving on to the AL West, in fifth place I have the Oakland A's going 61-101. and 101. The Athletics made it clear this offseason that they are tanking. They traded away Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, and Chris Bassett, some of their best players, and it looks like Sean Manaya and Frankie Montas could be on their way out as well. As their roster stands right now, they're one of the worst teams in baseball, so I don't think they're going to be close to competing. In fourth place, I have the Texas Rangers going 77-85. and 85. The Rangers did make some huge offseason acquisitions, acquiring Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager, as well as John Gray. But outside of that, I'm not too impressed with Texas's roster. I think they will, of course, be better than last year, but I still don't think they're going to compete. Now, for third place in the AL West, I have the Los Angeles Angels going 79-83. and 83. I understand the Angels have Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, and Anthony Rendon, but outside of those three, I'm not too impressed by this roster. They've shown in the past that they can have superstars like Trout and Otani on the roster and still not compete, and I'm just not too impressed by their roster this year. For second place, I have the Houston Astros going 90-72. and 72. This is going to come as a surprise to a lot of people. Everyone's picking Houston to win the division yet again, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the loss of Carlos Correa and the uncertainty of Justin Verlander this year is going to impact them. I'm not saying they're going to be a bad team. I still have them winning 90 games. I just don't think they're going to come out on top in the AL West. And for first place in the AL West, I have the Seattle Mariners going 99-63. and 63. And yes, I do understand Seattle's not looking this good on paper, but I just don't think everything's going to play out exactly how we see it in March. So Seattle's going to be my pick here to have a very big year. I like their offseason acquisitions in Adam Frazier and Robbie Ray, who is going to be their ace. I also think they have a very good bullpen. So all around, I think this team has the makings of a breakout team. Now moving over to the National League, starting out with the NL East. In fifth place, I have the Washington Nationals going 64-98. and the only reason why I don't have Washington losing over 100 games is because they have arguably the best player in baseball in Juan Soto. Soto is going to win them enough games. I think they're going to be a very bad team, but I just don't think they're going to lose 100 with a player like Juan Soto on their roster. For fourth place in the NL Central, I have the New York Mets going 82-80. and Now, I understand the Mets are expected to be a lot better because they made massive offseason pickups. They're a really good team on paper, but it's the New York Mets. They're just going to find somehow, some way to disappoint their fans. I think it's going to be a letdown this year. For third place in the NL Central, I have the Philadelphia Phillies going 84-78. and 78. I just recently made a video on Philadelphia and how I like their offseason acquisitions of Castellanos and Schwarbrand, also Corey Knable in the bullpen. I think they're going to be big additions to this team, and I think the Phillies are going to be a little bit better than last year. I also think Aaron Nola is going to have a bounce back year. I think he's going to look like an ace. So all around, I'm a big Philadelphia believer this year. For second place in the NL East, I have the Miami Marlins going 86-76. and 76. Offensively, the Marlins have some power bats in Jesus Aguilar and Jorge Soler. I don't think they're going to be the best offense in the world, but I think it's going to be good enough to get them over with how good their pitching staff is. Their pitching staff is just so good. They have Sandy Alcantara, Trevor Rogers, and Pablo Lopez. I think that pitching staff is going to be good enough to get them 86 wins on the air. I'm a big believer in Miami. And first place in the National League East, I have the Atlanta Braves going 94-68. and The Braves are, of course, the reigning World Series champions, and in this offseason, they basically swapped out Freddie Freeman for Matt Olson. They have a star-studded offense, they have a great pitching rotation, and also just picked up Kenley Jansen to close out games. So all around, this team is really good, and I think they're the clear-cut favorite to take the NL East. Getting over to the NL Central, in 5th place I have the Pittsburgh Pirates going 67-95. and Top to bottom, this team is simply not very good outside of Brian Reynolds. They do have a couple of young, exciting players in Cabrian Hayes and O'Neill Cruz, but overall this team is clearly not a competitor. For 4th place in the NL Central, I have the Cincinnati Reds going 69-93. and the Reds are similar to the Oakland A's in the sense that they made a lot of trades this offseason that basically tell everyone they are tanking. Cincinnati, as we stand today, is simply not a good team. I don't think they're going to come close to competing. Third place in the NL Central, I have the Chicago Cubs going 76-86. and Chicago is really not a bad team, but they're also not good. They're sort of stuck in the middle. 
They have a couple decent players in Marcus Stroman, Kyle Hendricks, and Wilson Contreras, but they're not really going to be great, but I also, like I said, don't think they're going to be too bad. Now for second place in the NL Central, I have the St. Louis Cardinals going 82-80. and 80. Now on paper, the Cardinals are a lot better than an 82-win team, but I'm just not a big believer in them this year. I'm not a huge fan of their starting rotation, and outside of Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt, and Tyler O'Neill, I don't think they have very much options offensively. The Cardinals are definitely a good team, I'm just not a big believer in them this year, so I have them going 82-80. and 80. And of course, first place in the NL Central, I have the Milwaukee Brewers going 87-75. and 75. The Brewers have one of the best starting rotations in all of baseball. They have a three-headed monster in Brandon Woodruff, Corbin Burns, and Freddie Peralta. On top of that, they have one of the best bullpens in the game that consists of Devin Williams and Josh Hader, so on the pitching side of things, they are up there with the best in baseball. I also do think Christian Yelich is going to have a bounce back year, so I think Milwaukee will take the NL Central with ease. Now moving on to the NL West, the final division. In fifth place, I have the Arizona Diamondbacks going 70-92. and 92. With a healthy Cattell Marte and Zach Gallen, I think the Diamondbacks are going to be a lot better than last year. Not a great team by any means, but I do think they will be a lot better than last year. In fourth place, I have the Colorado Rockies going 78-84. and 84. The Rockies are similar to the Rangers in the sense that they should probably be tanking, but it looks like they don't want to. They picked up Chris Bryant and also Randall Gritchick in a recent trade, so they're going to be okay offensively, but all around, the Rockies are clearly not a competitive team. For third place in the NL West, I have the San Francisco Giants going 83-79. and A lot of people seem to be predicting the Giants to be in the 85-90 to win range, and I think they're going to fall just short of that due to their starting rotation. I know it sounds crazy to talk down on San Francisco's rotation, but I don't think Carlos Rodon or Anthony DiScalfani are going to be close to as good as they were last year. Also, I'm not a really big fan of this team offensively. They're still going to be okay, but I don't think they're going to be close to as good as last year. For second place in the NL West, I have the San Diego Padres going 93-69. and The Padres are going to be without Fernando Tatis Jr. for a couple months, which will definitely hurt them, but I do think they will be fine. I'm a big believer in this starting rotation. I think Blake Snell and Yu Darvish are going to bounce back from last year, and they're also getting Mike Clevenger, who missed all of last year. And for first place in the NL West, I have the Los Angeles Dodgers going 105-57. I don't got too much to say about the Dodgers here. They're clearly one of the best teams, if not the best team in baseball. They execute year in and year out, and they're going to be good this year. So there you have my standing predictions for every single team in baseball this year. Now let's hop over to the awards. For the American League MVP, I'm going with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I think he is going to have a monster year. He's looked amazing in spring this year. I could see him hitting 50 plus home runs this year. And for the National League MVP, I'm going to be going with Bryce Harper. I think he is going to have yet another monster campaign here in 2022. And I think the Phillies are going to be improved off of last year as a whole. Now moving on to the Cy Young Award over in the American League, I'm going to be going with Shane Bieber. I think he is going to look more like he did in 2020 than he did last year. I think he is an amazing pitcher. He has filthy stuff and I think he's going to be dominant all year long. For the National League Cy Young Award, I was going back and forth between Brandon Woodruff and Walker Buehler, but ultimately went with Walker Buehler because I think he is just too good at this point in his career to not win a Cy Young. I think he's just going to break through and win it this year. Now for the American League Rookie of the Year Award, I'm going with Julio Rodriguez. I think if he does get called up by opening day, he is going to have a monster year. For the National League Rookie of the Year, I'm going with O'Neill Cruz. I think he's going to be one of the few reasons why Pittsburgh fans tune into games this year. All right, so now that we've done the awards and the standing predictions, let's get over to my postseason bracket. And for those who don't know, the postseason was expanded from 10 to 12 teams, so instead of five teams from each league, there will be six teams making it. And the first two seeds from each league will get a bye, and the three seed and the six seed will face off in a three-game series, and then the four and five seed will also face off in a three-game series. As for my six postseason teams in the American League, reading from top to bottom, one through six, I have the Mariners, the Jays, the White Sox, the Rays, the Astros, and the Red Sox. Again, reading top to bottom, one through six in the National League, I have the Dodgers, the Braves, the Brewers, the Padres, the Marlins, and the Phillies. For my first wildcard matchup, I have the three-seeded White Sox facing off against the six-seeded Red Sox, where I have the White Sox beating the Red Sox in three games to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. 
In the other American League wildcard game, I have the four-seeded Rays and the five-seeded Astros, and I have the Rays beating them in three games to take on the Seattle Mariners. In the National League, I have the three-seeded Brewers facing off against the six-seeded Phillies, and I have the Phillies taking that in two games to face off against the Atlanta Braves. In the 4-5 matchup, I have the Padres and Marlins, where I have the Padres beating the Marlins in two games to face off against the Dodgers. Moving back over to the American League side of things, I have the two-seeded Jays and the three-seeded White Sox, where I have the Toronto Blue Jays beating the White Sox in four games to advance to the ALCS. Now for the other American League matchup, I have the four-seeded Rays against the one-seeded Mariners, and I have the Rays sweeping the Mariners in three games to face off against the Blue Jays in the ALCS. Moving over to the National League side of things, I have the two-seeded Braves against the six-seeded Phillies, where I have the Braves winning in four games to advance to the NLCS. For the other National League division matchup, I have the Padres and Dodgers, where I have the Padres beating the Dodgers in five games to face off against the Braves in the NLCS. Now, in the American League Championship Series, I have the Toronto Blue Jays taking down the Rays in six games to advance to the World Series. In the National League, I have the Braves and Padres, where I have the Padres taking down the Braves in seven games to advance to the World Series. And in the World Series, I have the Padres and Jays, and I have the Padres beating the Jays in five games to win the World Series. So there you have it, my full 2022 postseason bracket. I think this is the Padres year. I think they're going to come out on top. I think Tatis is going to have a monster postseason run, and I think all in all, it's going to be a very exciting postseason. So there you have my full 2022 season predictions. Let me know what you guys think down below, where you agree, where you disagree, who you guys have winning the awards, who you guys have winning the World Series as well. I'd love to see what you guys think. And as always, if you guys do enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to continue to post a lot more baseball content here as we edge closer to the 2022 season. And lastly, I want to thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.